Hello there, my name is Jacob and you're watching Bermondsey Daily Message. Beautiful words from the beautiful book. Well, I was being updated on the story of someone recently who uh, is really struggling to believe that God loves them. Uh, they are a Christian, but they just feel like because of who they are, uh, because of maybe some of the things they've done or, or just what goes on in their minds and the things they think about, they find it very hard to believe that God could love them. They, they know he loves other people, uh, but they think who they are, what they're like, would make it very difficult for God to love them. They feel shame. And I think lots of people probably feel like that a lot of the time, lots of Christians, because, um, well, I was reading about a survey that's been done uh, over in the States, so maybe it, the results wouldn't be exactly the same here, but a survey that was done where Christians were asked, what is the reason that God accepts somebody? You know, on, on, uh, if you go to heaven, why will that be? And 52% of the Christians who were asked in this survey said that God accepts people uh, because of the good life they lead uh, and the way that they live. Well, either those 52% of people are right or they're wrong. If they're right, it means that um, God doesn't love you if you're not living up to his standards. Or it means that you just get really arrogant. You think that you're good enough. The things that you do are good enough to impress the perfect and holy God so much that he would love you for them. But maybe the 52%, maybe they're wrong. Maybe God's love for you isn't based on how impressive you are. Or have you done enough to win his favour? Because to be honest, that's a hopeless situation if you have to win God's favour. Just read the Old Testament, you'll find out that nobody seems to be able to do that. Now the good news of Christianity is that you can be ashamed of yourself. You can be the very chief of all sinners in the world and discover that God loves you in spite of who you are, in spite of your sin. Now, let me read to us uh, some verses that were written by uh, the Apostle Paul in his first letter to his friend Timothy. Now, the thing about Paul is that he was, well, perhaps the greatest evangelist the church has ever had. He worked hard to spread the message of the gospel right around the Mediterranean. Um, and the letters that he wrote that are in our New Testament have influenced 2,000 years worth of the church and world history. And yet, Paul wasn't always a great Christian man. No, no. In fact, Paul still knew that he had a, a past which looked really bad and was really bad. You see, Paul had been a persecutor of the church. Paul had been evil. If the worst sin the world has ever committed was crucifying Jesus, well, Paul tried to wipe out Jesus' church. He's not far behind. And yet, here's what he says about himself and why Jesus chose Paul to become a great Christian man. He says, Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul says, the reason God picked me, somebody who tried to wipe out the church of Jesus Christ, to be a Christian, is so that everybody could see that no matter how bad you are, you can be loved by God. His love isn't based on what you're like. If it was, how on earth could Paul ever have been accepted by God? No, no, no. He says, Paul was an example to show that eternal life all the gifts of God's grace and mercy come to those who believe in Jesus. Jesus is the one who's done what's necessary to ensure that God can love us. It doesn't depend on us. So you can be ashamed of yourself. You can be embarrassed by yourself. You can know that you've got skeletons in the closet and you've done very bad things. 
You could describe yourself as the worst of sinners. But that doesn't mean God won't love you. In fact, he sent Jesus to die for you while you were still a sinner. Your sin won't get in the way of his love. But also, don't think that just because you're a good person, you're going to be okay. What matters is belief in Jesus. He's the saviour. No one's going to get away with saying to God, aren't my works good enough? Haven't I been a good enough boy or girl all my life? Santa always gave me presents. Can't I come into heaven? It just doesn't work that way. Our standards are far too low to impress God. But his love is much bigger than our sinfulness. And so believe in Jesus and be sure that even while you are a sinner, God loves you because his love just does not depend on what you're like. Let's pray. Our Father God, we thank you that you love even the worst of sinners. Thank you that you loved Paul and saved him and welcomed him and accepted him and used him in your service. And we pray for everyone struggling with shame or fear that, that they're not good enough and that you couldn't love them. Please help them to realise that your love isn't based on what they're like or what they do. You don't have to be good enough. But that your love comes to them simply through faith in the Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thanks for watching Bermondsey Daily Message. Hope you have a great day today and we'll see you for the next message tomorrow. Goodbye.